computer. All right, welcome to the uh, APS, uh, RS Platform Services Coffee Break. Uh, this is the episode number 65. Thank you very much for joining today. Um, as usual, this is a very open space, no any topics or questions, any projects that you're working on. And uh, again, as usual, let me start with you. If you have any topics or questions that you'd like to bring up, um, just, oh, sorry, come back here, come back. And uh, yeah, let me start with you. If you have any you know, questions or topics, as usual, open your, uh, open your microphone, op uh, turn on your camera. Uh, camera is optional, but it's just like, it's fun. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, actually, I, I have a question regarding the measurement extension at the viewer, because mm -hmm. I realized that uh, for uh, platform services viewer or Forge viewer, is, it's free if you use it locally for PDF and DWF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's free for anyone, just uh, can use it locally. So what I'm planning to use it actually, but I would like to, I have a couple of questions regarding the measurement extension. So one of them, uh, if there is an event uh, that you could access uh, when you click on the measurement, not inside the measurements. So when you measure, of course, I can access all those events, but I'm planning to, when you click on the, and the bar outside so if there is an event you can use it this is one thing and the other things if there is a way to to manipulate and the color of the measurements now it's uh, only in the blue color okay so uh, i'm looking at the extension documentation here there's not much about uh gene colors or other things i would i would expect that the color is a setting somewhere that could be overwritten, right? Um, even if, even even when the viewer or the library is is JavaScript, and you can just you know, use it locally, right? You can you can just find out where the call is coming from, and then say class yeah. dot you know, that method and over override that value. Okay. Um, events. Uh, there are a few events, but you're talking about the toolbar, right? Yes, exactly. Not the event inside the measurement. So the event in the measurement, all of them, uh, I could actually access them using uh, uh, super, uh, you know, super clear at the viewer. So there is uh, uh, Autodesk uh, uh, viewing measurement, uh, measure comma. And mm -hmm. then there is the measurement that uh, you can use uh, it's at event listener, autodesk dot viewing dot measure comma dot event. So you can get the lead measurement and complete and all those stuff. But I'm planning when you click before that. Yeah. Mm. So um, um, I mean, yeah, it, it's a bit tricky because uh, sometimes those events are not there or not documented. But yeah. you know, every everything that you that you do in the viewer, right? Because the JavaScript library. There is a trigger for that, right? There is a button. There is a, an action there. So again, it it may, may be the case that we're just overriding an existing thing. Uh, Adam wrote an interesting article on, uh, you know, just looking for possible events and subscribing to them, so you can see what's happening. Uh, that may be a, 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 you know, a starting point for you, right? You you just. Mm -hmm check out what are the possible events that you have. And then you say, okay, now let me, this is the one that has been triggered every time that I, that I do this action. And you just yeah. work on that event. Mm -hmm. I guess in my case, the events, uh, maybe it's not the measurement itself. The measurement is the add-in and the toolbar. Those, I guess, I need to look for because, yeah. because whatever you click, for instance, if you click this walking person, for instance, or, you, or you click on, uh, you know, all desktop to get uh, all the disc all the screen or all those you know yeah uh, events uh, the buttons so this is what i want because the idea that i would like to when i click on it it do call the uh, uh, back in the api to the database and query all the measurement to bring them so that's what i'm, I'm thinking yeah, I'm thinking yeah but i mean if, yeah yes sorry go ahead yeah, but I mean, if it's uh, not in your, you know, if you have been dealing with it before, just uh, forget about it. I can. Yeah. Do no, there is a there is a way to look for events in the browser. Um, I'm trying to remember because I think Adam wrote that blog a while back as well. 
that you can use the browser to explore the possible mm -hmm. events. And then with that, with because it's just hooking into the HTML um, uh, elements, right? And um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because in the end, the but it's a button in the in the in the uh, uh, special uh, extension in the toolbar. Mm -hmm. So we will look. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there is a, there was another question. There are the, the the beginning for you was the um, um, you said about. DWF and PDF running locally, uh, yeah. yeah, that is possible. Uh, you can, you don't need to. It is it's not, it's not because it's free, right? It's because more derivative. You don't have to translate DWF and PDF to yeah. open the viewer. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is a lot of lots of people that use the viewer just to load those files without translating them. So yeah, it is mm -hmm. it is it is free, free in that case. Yes. And there is no there is no any plan in the future you're gonna change it or something. So I can't be dependent on it, what I'm working on. Uh there is no plan today to change charge for viewing or anything like that. Okay. Um well of, of course anything can change any point, right? Uh just a disclosure. <laughs> but uh we don't have any plans to to change anything like on this on this line. Yeah, it's and not, also you can add your own uh, on your add-in or the extension based on those PDF viewing because in the end it's as you say it's free. So I can write my special add-in for the PDF. Yes, well, yes, because once you once you have the viewer library viewer three yeah. djs running on, on your application, right? Uh, yeah. You can open any any DWF or PDF model there. You don't have to yeah to do anything yeah, different. exactly. So yeah. I'm I'm just dealing with the viewer the way I'm dealing with it with URN, right? But I'm dealing with it just with a file path now to S3 bucket or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Makes sense. So I will double check with Adam. Maybe I, I guess he's coming to Copenhagen in months or two with the mm, other. Yeah. yeah. So I can catch him here yeah. in that during the accelerator. Ask him. Cool. Great. Okay, so you, you, you are going then? I applied. Hopefully they will accept it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, thank you. Very good. And uh hope you have some good time in Copenhagen. I think it's a month and a half from now, mid-March, right? Yeah, it's almost. I, I live in Copenhagen, so it's, it's also where they're gonna where they will host it, it's just close by as well. Mm. So cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, so let me move to uh, other questions or topics. Thank you. Hey I Augusto. I oh sorry, go ahead. No, you go first. Okay. Hey, Augusto, this is Bowen. I, I just had a quick question. Um, we're, we're looking at creating a clash grouper within model coordination for the clash detection piece of it. And I was talking with Xiao Dong some time ago, and he said there's not a way to add um, a button to the extension bar within the, the viewer itself, as far as mm -hmm. an integration go but that we could do something <clears throat> kind of, I don't know if the term is webhook or, or what it is, but we'd basically create something on our browser side um, that could run the API calls and interact with the data in the browser. Do you have you do you have any examples of of stuff like that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so uh, you are trying to add a, a toolbar button in the viewer inside ACC to run some custom code. That's correct. Okay. Um, and uh, Chao Dong mentioned something about adding something on your browser to do that, right? Right. He talked about a group of, of people that did it for like VR, yeah. uh, VR tool. Yeah. So, um, so for, for, first, correct. That's not possible to customize ACC interface. You cannot, mm -hmm. we don't allow that uh, to you know, add buttons or add features there. Uh, okay. The only in way to interact with, with ACC APIs is through the server side, right? You have server side communication. Mm -hmm. Now, what people have done before is to create a, a Chrome extension, right? You load that Chrome extension, and mm -hmm. uh, whenever you load ACC page, you 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 inject HTML to that page in JavaScript okay. to create a new button that will trigger an action, right? So the code okay. is not actually on the page, but it's been embedded by the browser extension to it. Okay. The problem okay. with that approach is that you need, you know, you need a plugin inside your browser, and mm -hmm. uh, it only works 
for those browsers that have the plugin, right? If you don't have the plugin, that button will not appear. Right. So it, it could be a problem or not, depending on, on where you are. So um, I, I remember some companies did that before and they said, okay, to run my, our custom application, you have to do this, this, and this, plus install this extension. Okay. Great. It's not, it's not very clean, but no, um, it, it, is, it is what is possible. The main reason for that, and just to be to clarify, right, is that um, we we used to have that available on desktop, but that was always a source of confusion, you know, customizing the interface and how much you want to do there. So sure. in ACC, we're trying to be very strict on what is what you can modify. So today you can add uh, uh, partner cards inside the insights page, right? So that's one thing that you can do. But sure. um, yeah, anyway, that, that that's the reason. And uh, that's how you can hack around that using a browser extension. Okay. And I know, you know, like you said earlier, no promises or anything, but is this something that we can always do kind of independent, right? Because it would be a browser extension. So whether or not you guys allow for direct button integrations or not, yeah. this lives outside of ACC and just interacts with the server side directly. No, it doesn't interact with the server side, right? The browser extension is lo just loading on your local copy of the page and adding right. HTML there. So your right. extension may be triggering some server side code, right? But uh, right. we don't we don't see it in 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 uh, but bottom line we do we don't see any of that on our side. Now what can happen in the future is that if we change the, the ACC interface, the HTML will change, which may cause your extension to not find the precise place to inject the HTML. Oh I see. Okay. Well, so and, uh, and yeah, the, the, the risk is us changing the interface. Okay. And I think that's that's an okay risk because most of what we're doing is just grouping clashes and that's something you can do directly through the API, I mm -hmm. think right now. And yeah. so- Yeah. So yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. If, if I triggering that through the API, uh, then it, that part is okay. The, the, the risk there is just that button showing up on the interface, not, not showing anymore because of the version, right? So you can definitely right. add some checks there to confirm if the version is all right and, and add the button. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, interesting. There was someone else asking at the same time, was Eric? Yeah. Um, Hi, Eric. Sure. Hi, how are you? Doing well. Good. Yourself? Um, I'm well. I'm doing well. Cool. Um, I was just wondering if there were any uh, good tutorials or anything about like using React and getting like a three-legged authorization. Um, I so I was calling in my front end. I was trying to log in um, and get authorized and making uh, a call to my API in the back end, and um, I kept getting a cores error. Um, and yeah, I, that's, I, that's most likely, that's most likely because you are trying to do that from the browser. Right. So, but yes, yeah, so, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. Um, yeah, that was the first thing. And then, so what I ended up doing was I sent back the, the URL, um, instead of redirecting with getting authorization with that method or whatever it is. And so <laughs> I just sent it back and I used that, which which worked, but I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Yeah. So uh, the the authorization needs to be done on the server side, right? Because you have the you need the client ID and secret to do that, right? So that's why if you try to do that from the browser, we 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 have a we have a blocker there to avoid you trying to do that, just to prevent the mistake of exposing the secret. On in the browser, right? So that's why there is this core message. Right? So what yeah. you can do is to use a different type of authentication where the secret is not required, right? That okay. in that way, when you make the request to our server, we say, okay, you are not passing the the the, the, the secret, so we are okay accepting that kind of request because we know there is there are no mistakes coming from your side. With that said, uh, we just released um, an three two new options when you create an application that came up early this month. So uh, before that was only this traditional app that allows you to do three-legged and two-legged, right? Now we allow also 
desktop mobile single page, which is when you don't have a server side and server to server when you only have a server side, right? So um, this is not, this, this is more uh, flexible, allows all, all types, but this option here, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of a different workflow, but it was specially designed for uh, client side only applications, right? So we, it, it implements the PKCE uh, uh, standard, right? And the server to server will not allow you to do client side authentication because it's, it's only server to server, right? So you can select the one that is more flexible or more uh, uh, adjust, adjusted to your needs. Uh, but in summary, what we're talking about is that um, if you go to the documentation here and uh, go to now on authentication v2, there are no the options and you are just talking uh, code grant or implicit, uh, which is this, this second here is implicit grant or which you choose used to be before implicit, implicit grant. Now it's PKC. Okay, gotcha. Now that makes sense. Yeah, can can I add something? Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, because I've been uh, also I do uh, I do React uh, uh, TypeScript actually most of the time. Uh, so basically, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you're using the the um, the session to store the you know the token or the cookies. The problem is if you're running the back end and server port different than the front end server port, it will cause you this course error. So what do you can do in the development? So you just do it as a proxy. So you pass the local host that maybe if you're using Vite or whatever, you just add this as a proxy and then you start calling without the local host uh, uh, column port. But this is only in the development. And I believe if you've been following uh, maybe uh, the guys from Autodesk, uh, they've been doing those uh, accelerators or, or those and the, and, uh, you know, online. So they've been using that that way because they don't do two servers. They do it one, uh, you know, one application, not GS and the server. So it doesn't work in that way. So you need to do it through any grok. So you need to do it the right way. So I guess in the documentation, they do it. So you need to install ngrok in the beginning to know and then to send it direct to your to your uh, desktop app or the web application. That's why the course, I've been dealing with this, I guess the past last month for some time. And yeah, and I found out. Okay, oh, I yeah. got you. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, just add it to the proxy, solve all the problem, but this is only in development if you, you know, otherwise you can do it other way. You just, uh, you know, when you build your React app, you just take it, you put it in the back end and you serve it as a, as a, you know, as a, when you get requests. So you serve the entire application as a, as a file when you build it. So it works in that way. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for, for sharing the information. I bet it's very interesting. I, I'm not yeah, using yeah, React I've been, that much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been working and also I've been using uh, Next uh, Next.js as well as a, as a server side, right? So mm -hmm. serverless. So also I use uh, Ford with it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. That, that helps a lot. Cool. Welcome. All right. Any other? questions or topics. So we did release that new application type uh, early this month. Uh, that's you no know, something that was requested for some time to implement client side only applications, uh, the PKCE uh, option. Uh, there are a few more things in our blog and uh, this is also quite interesting, this phasing sample here that uh, you know, it's, an, it's an extension sample uh, that allows you to import um, um, what they call it grant chart, right? That, that you see you no know, progress. But the interesting piece is that we see this over and over and over, right? This kind of request. And I said, okay, what about writing an extension for it that you can just you know, import the CSV and, and get, it, get it running? This kind of CSV usually comes from you no know, applications that are you no know, doing planning, like, like, uh, uh, like a, a project, project, and uh, yeah, it's available here. There is some source code samples. Have any of you been working with something like this, or have you have a have a request around this as well? Hi, sorry, I had a completely separate question. Oh yes, uh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, me, I'm, top share. 
Uh, I'm pretty new to um, like Autodesk, like APIs. I was just wondering if there's a way to like uh, render like Revit views um, like in 3D uh, via any of your APIs. Render? What do you mean by render? Um, I guess like create like a 3D render um, with like shadows and lighting and whatnot um, from Revit. Are you talking creating a photographic image of the model from 3D view models? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so rendering, it's it's always a tricky topic, right? Uh, it's It varies a lot on the level of quality that you are expecting. So that's the first thing to, to get clear, right? So uh, the, the, the viewer, which we mentioned a few times here, right? allow you to see those those Revit models with all the with all the selected 3D views on that model. That could give you a very good quality with uh, in regards to materials, uh, some shadows as well. You can apply some shadows, um, but it's not like you no know, photographic quality, right? Um, for that, you need for for but I mean just to complete with the viewer, you can get you know interactive 3D views with you no know, very good quality. And I've seen companies using that to view, uh, you know, to have end user consumer views of their buildings, of their apartments, like you know, when you are selling a unit. So that that could work. I've seen that before. It's not it's not photorealistic, but it's 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 good. You know, uh, we don't have a, a rendering service that you can upload your Revit files and really do photo photographic quality. We have. 3ds Max available in the in in as part of Design Automation API that allow you to open 3ds Max and run some scripts, but it's not meant to do uh, photographic quality, right? You can run some rendering, but there are some limitations there on how much you can do. So uh, I think the short answer is we don't have a render as a service feature or or API. We have a few options that could be something for you that you could use and uh which is the viewer which is okay and 3ds max but there are some limitations as well does it answer your question yeah it does thanks so much i would okay. add to that that there's also the option that you can try to use design automation because you can render natively in revit so you should be able to use that route I think. Yeah, you. I believe you can, uh, but uh, it's not. In, it's not the the photorealistic. So it's it. I mean, maybe the, uh, it's all, yeah. The, the, it's, it's you will all, it's get, well, you, you you will get uh, you will you won't get photorealism. Photorealism. No, you will get a decent quality image. And it will take it will take a long time. It will not be a quick uh, cheap solution, if you use design automation. Mm. Because it will it will render uh, easily half an hour to an hour if you want high quality. But so that's ben, that's, what, that's, yeah, that's an sorry. option that you could explore if you really want this. Yeah. So Ben, what what are you trying to achieve with this? What kind of uh, what is the output that you expect? Like a, a consumer uh, uh, views, consumer rendering, or is just preview? What are you looking for? Yeah, I think it's I think it's um basically just like a consumer um view, like basically very similar to what um Revit is able to do natively right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but ideally through some sort of API. But it seems like the uh like the viewer that Autodesk provides is maybe like the best um kind of like uh medium option right now. Yeah. So, thanks. All right, yeah. So yeah, I mean with with uh with viewer, you can do something right that many you no know, consumers would expect to be okay, but it's not like you no know, photorealistic. So it's always a something to consider first, right? What is the level of expectation you have with your customers? I've seen before uh, people uploading Revit models with applied materials to walls and and doors and roofs, all of those things, right? 
And uh, when you upload the Revit module, you have to upload the Revit as a zip with all the textures in that zip, right? So when the, when the translation engine opens that Revit file to extract the viewables, all the materials are there, and then it can apply those to all the elements, and then the result should, should look good. Um, but it's still not like photorealistic. It's, it's good, right? If, if you look at those, uh, if, you, if you go to a, a booth that is selling apartments, they don't have many, 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 many times they don't have photorealistic. They have this computer view of the model, right? Of the, the space. And yeah, I mean, something to explore if that's the result you want. Got it. Thanks so much. Cool. All right, we have we are very close to the end of our thirty minutes. Uh, any last topics? Uh, so we do have, I think, a bad mention that we have uh, an accelerator planned for uh, Copenhagen in May. We have one as well this month in Pune, India. Then uh, Copenhagen and uh, mid mid to end April. We have one in uh, Nice, France. So this is, as is usually just a very great, good, good chance to work on a project, meet the, the Autodesk team, uh, get some no real-time support. Uh, I believe who here have attended one of those before. Yeah, I, I did the London one, actually. Okay, cool. And you as well, Mark? Uh, where did you attend? Uh, and the London, not, none of those. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> that was, sorry. Guess, three years ago. <laughs> okay. I did one in uh, Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona. Yeah, nice place, right? Okay. Yes. And um, well, this time we have in Nice, also a uh, very <laughs> nice place. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's a chance for you to attend. Uh, we still we still taking registrations for uh, for those events. Pune is very close. Should be closing soon. And uh, yeah, I hope to see that you, you are able to attend you and uh, maybe see you in one of those. We do have plans to do more in the US and more in Europe, but um, definitely um, not as many because no uh, people are not traveling that much. So take the chance to attend as soon as you can. And uh, with that, let me... I, I, I just have a quick question. <laughs> yes. Super quick, promise. Uh, regarding the... Um... Uh, Autodesk uh, University 2023, if I want to apply for something to present during uh, Autodesk Platform and Services, because I'm working on application, I would really love to maybe get the chance. But I really would like to know in advance to apply for visa. So I can apply from now or I need to wait for a specific date? Uh, the registration, the call for proposals should open yeah. usually sometime in April. Okay. Uh, and then the acceptance, it's usually sometime in June, right? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what you need for your visa, but uh, yeah, it most likely will be sometime in June before the approval, right? Or in okay. registration. Registration a bit later than that. Um, okay, great. Yeah. But you can, Super. I believe you can apply for a visa with a letter of, uh, you know, with, with a, with a with a description that you want to attend this event that is coming this date, right? You know when the event will be, November uh, 13, and uh, in, in Las Vegas. So you know when and where, right? So it, I mean, mm -hmm. you can probably start. I don't know how, how long it takes for you to apply for a visa, so something, yeah. Yeah, I will try. Thanks. All right, cool. So with that, uh, let me close up. Uh, so the next coffee break, will be uh, in two weeks from now, uh, February 22nd. Same link, same time, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, thank you very much for attending today. And uh, see you in two weeks. Thank you.